Welcome back to the channel. I'd like to start by thanking everybody who's been watching and all the new subscribers. I really appreciate it. Um, today's video is going to be on a fault code uh, regarding a DMAG two-ton hoist. Um, this hoist was removed due to a fault code and um, I got called in to uh, diagnose what the fault code was. Um, the employees that removed it um, weren't aware of these types of fault codes. So I have a little bit more experience with these types of fault codes. So I came in to kind of start troubleshooting on this uh, hoist that was uh, non-functional. Um, the issue with the hoist is that it worked in one direction and not the other. So it would lift up, but it wouldn't, uh, it, it would, it would go down, but it wouldn't go up. So they kept extending the chain and they had a, an abundance of chain and they weren't able to retract it into the um, chain collector. So have a look at the video. So I set up this temporary whip uh, just to get this thing powered in a remote location um, that was available at the time. So this is 480 volt. So I'm just uh, wiring in this whip so I could get some power to this hoist so I can start testing operation and actually see what's going on with the hoist. And from that point, I'll make a determination on what I gotta do. Um, so I was just wanted to get power to the hoist so I can see operation and understand what's going on. So I just kind of set a quick whip into this hoist and now I'm going to power it up. So upon first startup, I noticed um, that the hoist would go down, but it would not retract. So every time I try to go up with the hoist, it wouldn't have any movement, but it gave a fault code. And in these DMAG hoist, it has a little uh, indicator lamp or an indicator module that uh, will read out uh, one letter at a time or one numerical numeral at a time. And you can use that as the fault code indicator, almost like an HVAC system with the blinking lights. So every time I try to go up, it would give me this fault code, uh, lightning bolt one. So it kept giving me that lightning bolt one fault code so I had to kind of look into what that was. So I went and I had gotten um, the schematic and kind of printed out what I needed from the schematic. And I actually got the uh, fault code that uh, was uh, in reference to lightning bolt one. And from this, um, from the manual, it says that lightning bolt one is uh, slip lifting, startup, no lifting. Um, that's the fault, no lifting with load. So uh, this actually has no load on it. So um, I was kind of reading more into it and it says a main phase is missing or the motor is blocked. Chain hoist is overloaded or under voltage. So I had actually checked um, the voltage and uh, verified that all that is good. And it also says uh, part of the um, uh, process to uh, uh, repair this code is check mains connection and or fuse link check connection cable for interruption, check mains connector in the service enclosure, reduce the load to the permissible load capacity, ensure appropriate mains voltage. So we went ahead and uh, we did all that and um, the code was still persistent. So yeah, that's that code. So that's a, a just a little window into what that code is. So I have to move from there and kind of uh, get get to see where I can find the specific issue is. So I'm just reading uh, everything in person, uh, what I just uh, showed you guys on the screen. And yeah, same thing. So I go check the mains voltage. I just wanna verify that I got 480. Uh, this is three phase 480. I want to verify that I have 480 across all three legs, all three phases. So there's 480. 480. And 480. So my mains power supply is good. So I know the issue isn't there. So it also says to remove the load. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the chain assembly from it and I want only the motor to be running 
just in case there's binding in the chain assembly and if it's just the motor and the gearbox that'll kind of give me an idea that um, it is in the gearbox or in the motor but as a troubleshooter what I can see is that the motor runs in one direction usually if a motor is faulted out it won't run at all or it'll be shorting or it'll be blowing fuses and if a gearbox is uh, faulting out then you'll usually be able to hear a type of grinding noise or metal to metal and you can kind of hear a gearbox go bad bef before uh, uh, it indicates you know it, it really makes itself known so all these uh, all these hoists are essentially is a motor into a gearbox with the chain assembly and then that and then that kind of lifts So I got the chain assembly off and I'm going to try it now with no absolutely no load. So it's got no lifting load and no driving load. So it is running still in one direction and in the other direction it's still giving the fault. So I know it's not in the chain assembly. So now I'm going to I'm going to uh narrow my search or my troubleshooting into only the motor gearbox or somewhere in that realm so now i'm looking at the drawing and i will show you guys the drawing um this is the drawing so we have a uh, 480 coming in here and it goes into the control the dc control board and then it makes its way over to the motor and then it goes in uh uh, in this sequence, uh, phase sequence here for either up, and then it goes into this phase sequence, which switches two lines uh, for down. So uh, the next part of my process is uh, now that I can see, uh, I'm made aware that the motor is functional, and um, I don't hear any grinding in the gearbox. I want to start checking my legs, my phases uh, that go directly to the motor, not on the supply line. kind of what I'm looking at right there and you can see I'm checking I'm gonna I'm gonna troubleshoot these three and then I'll troubleshoot these three and then kind of see if I have any variations uh, at that point because that's the last um, uh, current supply that goes directly to the motor and I want to see what both sides are doing so I kind of had an inclination that one side was solid and the other was not uh, the side that was faulting out so I had to get some um, uh, very narrow probes in order to do this check, but uh, I have a Fluke uh, uh, probe kit that has a variation of probes where you can use for specific types of troubleshooting, uh, jumpers, alligator clips, etc. So first I'm checking the side that is functional and I want to see if we're getting any voltage drop across any of those legs. So I'm checking A to C, A to B, and uh, B to A, or B to C. And we're getting 480 on all three of those. So it seems like that direction is fully functional, which I expected but I just wanted to get a reference point on what I'm looking for in case I see a, a, a severe voltage drop. So I did a, I did a lock. I put the, uh, the meter in a lock so I can see uh, what the lowest voltage was just in case. And it looks like on the lifting side, I'm actually getting no voltage. I'm getting negative voltage. So I'm not getting the 480 that the motor needs in order to operate. So 
So I think that one was 29.2 volts and the other one was negative 46. So the meter is kind of showing me uh, values that are all over the place and the motor is definitely not gonna function with uh, in that condition. So it kind of gave me an idea like, hey, if the motor's not even getting the voltage that it needs, there's probably an issue in the control board and that's all these uh, uh, hoist runoff of mainly is a, is a control board that has inputs and outputs. So if the main function of the control board goes bad, it won't deliver that input into the output into the motor. So right now, I, I, I happen to get lucky and have uh, another control board off of another hoist uh, that was very similar to this one. So I'm gonna give it a practice shot and just see, uh, I'm gonna remove this board and try to um, install another board just to see if I gain function off of it. And then I'll know for sure that I need to order a new board for this hoist and then I'll proceed to um, getting part numbers and, and placing an order for the customer. So I don't see any burn marks or anything out of the gate. So this is the new board, uh, not a new board, it's a used board, but it's off of another hoist. So I wanna see if this board gives me any function um, that's anything different. So a lot of times when you're troubleshooting, if you have an identical part, um, well, if you have a, 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 a fault that's in question and you have an identical part, um, sometimes it's easier just to uh, just to swap it out real quick if it's easy enough and uh, see if you get any difference of function in uh, with a different part and um, that's usually always a good method to do if if that option is available and in this case from what I seen from troubleshooting that board I was almost positive that the board was bad but I just wanted to go ahead and do a final determination um, I was ready to call this board bad, but if I had the option to just double check and verify, it's even better. So I'm just putting all the um, connectors back onto this board, um, everything that it takes for this board to run. Um, the uh, limit switches, the brake, uh, the pendant uh, control, the main supplies connector, and the um, the uh, fault indicator or display. So now I'm gonna test it with the new board. So I tested the direction that I know is functional, and now this is the reverse direction. So both directions are functional, with this other used board, which is virtually the same board. So I, now I know for a fact that the board is bad. So based off this information, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a quote for a new board and go ahead and uh, as soon as I get there, I'll, I'll come back to this facility and uh, replace that board, get this uh, hoist functional, and then I can put it in their inventory. So that's pretty much it. Um, that one was uh, kind of a fun one. And um, that uh, troubleshooting process uh, is usually, uh, every every uh, situation is different, but that's basically it. You know, uh, in these cases, I just removed the load, tested it with no load, um, uh, did some uh, uh, references based on their um, schematics and their uh, troubleshooting methods from the manual and uh, kind of led me in the direction. But um, 
yeah, if you ever have trouble with these hoists, man, you, uh, your meter is your best friend. So I appreciate everybody for watching. And uh, if you like the content, please, I recommend that you subscribe and stick around. I appreciate the view, guys. Thank you.